Today, I'm going to talk about our work B cluster. The goal of it is to simplify the development and deployment of autonomous drone applications. As we know, small error drones have already enabled many applications, such as error mapping, facility inspection, and search and rescue. And many of those applications are shifting from traditional applications, which require human operators, to the emerging autonomous applications, which are often powered by machine learning and can perform complicated tasks in an autonomous way. However, we find developing autonomous drone applications is actually very challenging. Drone applications today involves many components, from very high-level application logic to the low-level drone control logic. For example, in a sensing application, the application logic may need to figure out where the drone should go to collect sensing data, how to process the collected data, and how to react to the results. The optimization logic together with drone fleet control logic may need to figure out how to schedule a fleet of drones and find the most efficient routes for a fleet of drones. To build an autonomous drone application, developers often need to face to all of those complexities, which make it very challenging to build good drone applications. So how can we solve this problem? In this work, we explore the direction of drone orchestration. The drone orchestration platform controls a fleet of drones and provides a programming interface to the application. Developers of orchestrated drone applications only need to focus on the application logic and the orchestration platform will take care of other complexities, such as the optimization and the low-level drone controls. There are two very interesting design questions in this drone orchestration platform. One is about the program interface, which determines what types of applications can be supported and how easy it is to develop the applications. The other is about the optimization supported by the orchestration platform. The optimization is important because all the drones have a very limited battery time and the battery replacement is often time consuming. Here, the optimization has to be independent to the applications because the platform should be a general purpose platform and it needs to support different applications at the same time. The question here is what are the optimizations we can support? In B cluster, we give our answers to these two questions. B clusters implement three key features. The first two features are about the programming interface. The goal here consists of two parts. For the developers, we want to make our program interface easy to use and be flexible to support different application logic and different coding styles. For the platform, we want the interface to be informative so that the backend can get enough information to do optimization. To achieve these goals, we use dynamic task graph as our programming model. We support dynamic tasking and provide rich task to drone mapping options to the developers. The third feature is predictive optimization, which is a highlight of this paper. While the application is running, our platform can forecast the application's future behavior and use the forecast to make better optimization in terms of reducing the application's execution time. Here, the task to drone mapping options and the predictive optimization are two new contributions we made in this work. Next, we show an example on the predictive optimization. Suppose we have a short program that consists of an active sensing loop. At each iteration, the program first uses drones to collect sensing data at three different locations. Then the program updates the locations based on the sensing values. When the program reaches line three in the first iteration, we show a possible scenario here. In this scenario, we only have one drone. At this moment, there are two possible routes to visit these three locations. The drone can visit them in a counterclockwise way or a clockwise way. Both of the two cases here are optimal. Then let's move to the next iteration. Suppose the new locations are A2, B2, and C2. We can find the two cases here turn out to be not equivalent. In fact, the first case on the left side is much better than the one on the right side. This is because the drone has to fly from C1 to A2 in case two, while the drone only needs to fly from B1 to A2 in case one, which is much shorter. Now let's move back to the first iteration. If we can predict what will happen next, then we will know at the first iteration, we should let the drone visit the three locations in a counterclockwise way rather than clockwise way. So far, we have discussed the introduction and the motivation of our work. 
Next, we will show more details about several design choices we made in this work. B cluster adopts an imperative programming model, which is based on dynamic task graph. The application logic is represented as a task graph, and the task graph can be dynamically updated. There are two basic primitives in our programming model. One is action, which describes the basic actions such as flying to a location or taking a photo. The other is task, which consists of a sequence of actions. There can be multiple tasks running concurrently in an application. Our programming model consists of several basic API. The first is the creation of new action and new task. They are all non-blocking function calls. The creation API will return handler rather than the execution result of the action or task. This non-blocking property allows users to create concurrent tasks which can potentially run on multiple physical drones. Later on, the execution result can be retrieved from the handler, and the retrieval operations are blocking operations. The task can also be canceled dynamically through the task handler. We use this programming model because first, it is very powerful. It can express many different coding structures, for example, multi-threading, conditional branch, loops, and even a recursive function. Developers can also compose these basic structures to express more complicated application logic. This makes our B cluster platform capable of supporting a wide range of different applications. Second, we can also use the task graph as an intermediate representation because it is very informative. Having this intermediate representation is very helpful for future development because later on, if we want to add a new optimization technique into our platform, we don't need to change any source code of the applications. Next, to give you a more concrete idea, we show a coding example. In this example, the programming is trying to locate the Wi-Fi hotspot using a gradient descent algorithm. We will run through this program line by line. The code starts at line six. The algorithm starts at an initial location. Then the program enters a loop. In the first iteration at line nine, we compute the coordinates of the four corners of a square whose center is the initial location. Then we use the new task API to create four tasks. Each task mirrors the Wi-Fi signal at one location. The new task API here is not blocking, so the program creates all the four tasks at almost the same time. The execution will block at LAN 16 because the sending result of each task needs to be retrieved. Now at this moment, we have created four tasks in our dynamic task graph. Each of the tasks is an independent thread running the code in the sense function with different parameters. There are actually four copies of the sense function running concurrently. Each of them creates two actions, flying to the target location and mirror the Wi-Fi signal at the target location. The execution blocked at LAN 4. At this moment, the orchestration system will schedule drones to do the four tasks. The four tasks can be done with one drone in sequence or with multiple drones in parallel. After the four tasks are completed, the size function returns and the execution of the main thread continues. The program moves the center location toward the Wi-Fi hotspot, then the execution enters the second iteration and keeps appending new tasks to the task graph. Next, we talk about the task to join mapping options. When the task is being executed, we need to map the actions to physical drones. In a naive design, we can simply always map the entire task to one physical drone. However, we find this solution is not sufficient. In B cluster, we provide more options. When the developers create a new task, they can configure the task to drone mapping options through two flags, the same drone flag and the interruptible flag. When the same drone flag is set, all the actions within a task have to be done on the same physical drone. When the interruptible flag is set to be false, the runtime system will try to minimize the time interval between two consecutive actions. For example, if we want to track a moving object, we can create a task which a bunch of locate and move actions. The actions can be performed on different drones, but we want to minimize the time gaps between two consecutive actions, because if this time gap is too long, the tracking may fail. In this case, we can set both the same drone flag and the interruptible flag to false. 
we find this fine granularity mapping options can also provide additional optimization space. For example, if we have a package delivery task, the task has two actions, pick up a package at location A and drop package at location B. In this scenario, we have to set the same drone flag to be true because the two actions have to be done on one physical drone. In fact, we can also set the interruptible flag to be true because while the drone is flying from location A to location B, the orchestration system can still use the drone to perform other tasks, for example, taking some photos. This actually allows the drone orchestration platform to do fine granularity action level multiplexing, making the usage of drone more efficient. In total, the two flags create four different task to drone mapping options. These options can benefit both the developers and the platform. Developers can use these options to annotate their tasks, giving them more control on how to map tasks to physical drones. These options also provide more information to the orchestration platform, so the platform can know what a task really needs in a very precise way. With this information, when there are multiple tasks running at the same time, the platform can schedule drones in a more efficient way. Next, we will talk about the predictive optimization. The first step of the predictive optimization is to predict the application's future behavior. In our programming model, the application logic is fully captured by the dynamic task graph. So the prediction problem here turns out to be, given the current task graph, predict what will happen next to the task graph. For example, new nodes might be added to the graph or existing tasks might be canceled. We make this task graph prediction through matching the current task graph with historical task graph from previous runs of the application, as well as the early portion of the current task graph. When a match is found, we look at what happened next in the match task graph, and we use them as prediction. The assumption here is what happened before may just happen again. The next part is about scheduling. At each time point, we know the states of each drone, the active tasks that need to be complete, and the predictions related to the active task. The job of the scheduler is to assign each drone to an active task or a predictive task. In B cluster, the scheduler search for the best assignments using a simulated annealing algorithm. Here, the best assignments are evaluated using a set of utility functions, which are integrated to our platform as plugins. For more details, please check our paper. We implemented B cluster and evaluated it on real drones. Here we show the software stack of our implementation. The implementation consists of two parts. One is the code running in a centralized server, which includes the application code and the B cluster runtime. The other part is the code running on each physical drones. These two parts communicate to each other through a wireless link. We implemented two simulators to help verify the correctness of the code. We assembled a drone using DJI F450 drone frame and the DJI N3 flight controller. We used Raspberry Pi as the onboard computer where the onboard code is running. The drone has about 15 to 17 minutes flying time. We used this drone in our evaluation. Next, we will show a few case studies. The first case study is about locating Wi-Fi hotspot using a gradient descent algorithm. Recall the code we showed before. The main structure here is a loop. At each iteration of the loop, the drone needs to estimate the gradient of a Wi-Fi signal field and fly towards the gradient direction. To estimate the gradient, the drone needs to measure Wi-Fi signal strength at the four locations of a square. Here, we show the trajectory of a drone in a real setup. At the first few iterations, there are no prediction information available. So the drone will visit the four corners of a square either clockwise or counterclockwise, because both of them are local optimals. Later on, the prediction information becomes available. B cluster starts to use the prediction information to help schedule the drones. As a result, the drone will always visit the four locations in a counterclockwise way, which lead to global optimal. In this case studies, we find B cluster's predictive optimization can improve the execution time of the application by around 10%. In the second case study, 
we use drones to create a Wi-Fi coverage map. In the program, we first split the region of interest into about 140 grid cells and create a task for each cell. Then the drone starts to measure Wi-Fi signal strengths at those locations. Once the measurement is collected, we use a Gaussian process model to estimate the uncertainty of the Wi-Fi signal strengths at each location. If the uncertainty is below a threshold, we cancel the corresponding tasks. In this case, the drone doesn't need to visit all the 140 tasks, but it can still create the Wi-Fi coverage map with some accuracy bound. Here we compare B cluster against a baseline without predictive optimization. In this application, if a task is completed, it may cancel nearby tasks. B cluster predicts this behavior and use it to optimize the route. We can find with B cluster's predictive optimization, the route of the drone is more efficient. In case study three, we build an application to map a new road. The application treats the road using an iterative algorithm. At each iteration, we capture a photo of the road. We use a neural network model to extract the road segmentation and move to the next location along the road. After many iterations, the application creates a polyline for the new road. In this algorithm, the task of each iteration depends on the execution result of its previous iteration, making the algorithm hard to be parallelized. In B cluster, we use predictive optimization to parallelize the algorithm. When there are two drones in the system, while one drone is performing sensing task at one iteration, B cluster predicts the task of the next iteration and sends the second drone to the predictive location. We call this strategy speculative execution. This strategy overlaps the sensing time and the flying time of the two drones. Therefore, it can speed up the execution time of the application. In summary, the goal of our work is to make it easy to build cross-platform and optimize the drone applications. To achieve this goal, B cluster explores the direction of drone orchestration and implements three key features. B cluster supports dynamic tasking. It also provides rich task drone mapping options to the developers. And most importantly, B cluster supports predictive optimization. We have made our project an open source project. If you are interested to learn more about our work, please check our paper or visit our website. In fact, there are still a lot of open questions in the direction of drone orchestration platform. So if you are interested in contributing to our B cluster platform, please feel free to send us an email. Thank you.